story we tell is, mm. man, if a dad will take his kids to the waterfall of God's love. So picture a hike, picture a waterfall that maybe you've been up near. If a dad will get soaking wet with the love of God and their kids love to be with dad, there's no way those kids don't get wet with the love of God. And mm. and that we, we anchor that back to Deuteronomy 30, 19. I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your kids may live. And that live is not survive. That live is not just like a baseline. Like we get to choose as dads, life or death. If we choose life, if we choose to enter with our whole hearts and pursue the hearts of our kids and experience the love of God and bring our kids with us to get wet with the wow. soaking wet with God's love, then the promise is forward to future generations with that verse. If we choose life, then they may live and live and we need. That's our prayer is that there'll be a ripple effect forward of dads mm. that live with their whole hearts and dads that le lead with wonder will raise kids who lead with mm. wonder and it snowballs. Tell us a little bit about you and your family and the ministry of Dad Awesome. So thankful to join you guys today. And uh, I'll give the backstory in a second, but let me tell you the most important thing first. I I am a husband. I've been married 18 years to my best friend, Michelle. We have four daughters and the dad life is a gift. Like I love being a dad to my four girls. In fact, for a while, uh, for like two and a half years, we lived in our RV traveling the country and I would be out for a walk like to the laundry you know, laundry facility at an RV park. And I'm holding my little girl's hands walking through the RV park and people would say, man, are you hoping for a boy? Like, like they assume that because I have four girls that I'm missing something. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not missing anything. Dad, li the dad life is so good, um, but it's also overwhelming. Um, and so we started Dad Awesome almost seven years ago with the intent of helping dads just like me. I was only a dad of two little girls at the time because uh, my girls are 10 through uh, the youngest is three. Um, wow. So the youngest oh, has lived busy. her whole life basically in an RV <laughs> traveling um, for ministry, for the minis the mission of Dad Awesome. But yeah, it's uh, the, the Dad Awesome started from a desire of, can we just help dads love the dad life, bring their full hearts and uh, guide their kids towards a God who is all things awesome. And it's been a, yeah, almost seven year journey. Wow, man, that, that is, that sounds great to me. I don't, I don't know that my wife would be down for a two year <laughs> RV trip with, with little kids, but, um, I love that thought. What, what, how, how'd that, how'd that come about? I'm sure most people listening were like, Whoa, wait, what now? You just glanced right over that two years in an RV thing. Sure. Yeah, there's like two pieces to that that question or that answer. One is the the starting point of Dad Awesome was a spot where I felt like I was not being intentional as a dad. I wasn't reading books, wasn't listening to podcasts, had never done an online course. I'd never been to a conference, never been a part of a small group, never reached out to a mentor specifically for dad mm -hmm. wisdom. So all of a sudden, here I am with a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and I had not the the primary inputs of intentional growth. I could say I was missing it in all those areas. So who am I to start a dad ministry, right? To start a uh, an initiative around intentional fatherhood. And truly, it was an experiment that turned into, it was 10 weeks of learning and sharing. And then into, I just like, man, I was learning so much personally that I just kept going with this weekly podcast and small group curriculum. And it went mm -hmm. forward. But when we started activating dads, so we realized that about half of the dads in my church community and my circle of friends did not opt in to self-help in the area of, man, mm. I want to grow. I want to get a daily text message to be an intentional dad, or, hey, I want to join a small group. I want to put in my earbuds uh, voices of men talking about intentional fatherhoods. About half opted out. Lots of reasons that I think dads would opt out to that intentional learning that we were creating, the curation of, of great resources. But as soon as we invited those, those men, those dads to do something on behalf of the fatherless. So we invited these guys, mm. would you come ride your bike 100 miles with us um, on behalf of our partners who directly serve the fatherless by inviting them to action. So we were, our big prayers, man, we'd be activating dads to lead with wonder. And we found that activation actually brought the deeper. Then we do this kind of, we just drip 
intentional fatherhood resources to the guys as they train and as they ride and as they fundraise for our partners. But the mission is others with Fathers for the Fatherless. So we created this mission um, called Fathers for the Fatherless, 100 mile bike rides, which has now turned into obstacle course races and wow. half Ironmen and uh, triathlons and, yep. and runs and other things. But we, we found invitations coming around the country. Hey, would you come and help run one of these events? We're seeing what God is doing. Wow. And it started out of the Twin Cities in Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul. So I have all these invites and I look at my wife and my little girls and the idea of being the dad that flies away from his girls to go lead this initiative, um, this dad awesome and fathers for the fatherless initiative. Um, we just were probably a, a lot on spot. the weekends too, right? You got it. The, the rides are okay. usually on Saturdays. And there's nothing wrong. Of course, there's some times you need to fly, fly away. Mission calls us and family can send us away from family to to lead in this area. But we had the opportunity to go all in and do it as a family. So mm, wow. what a gift, right? What a gift. We borrowed an RV for a first lap and then we rented an RV and then we bought an RV. And the next thing we knew, 550 nights of living on the road in an RV hosting these, uh, wow. these events that have... It's just like, you can't make this stuff up. I, I, well, wait I a minute. So how, how can you do that many bike rides in Minnesota? <clears throat> I mean, you can only <laughs> bike there in like July. There's a sweet spot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we did our first ride in, on Father's Day weekend, the day before Father's Day. And it was so cold, the training. We were, we were biking in the like snow, in, in like <laughs> April snow. So we were like, we, let's not do that. So then we moved it to August. But yes, Minnesota has had a ride every year for six years. And then it, it's really it has spread all around the country. So we're, we're, we're still in awe. We can't believe it. We just celebrated last week. So it's fun to shout this out. Not This is not a look what we did, but we've had over a thousand men say yes to this mission. Wow. And we've been kind of creeping up on this big threshold goal. And all the money we raise, we asked the guys to raise $750 each as a fundraising piece to help our partners who directly mm. serve the fatherless. So none of that money goes back to Dad Awesome. It's so fun to just give it away, give it away about. Yeah. We give it through our international partner and a, and a local partner with each of our events. Well, we passed uh, just five days ago, we passed the $1 million mark that we celebrated wow. Wow. Uh, giving a million dollars to our partners who are doing life-changing work. And we, we, my team and I are looking at each other, the guys who kind of started this thing, we're like, can you believe wow. this? Like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even want to wear spandex to get on a bike and bike 100 miles. Like, I didn't <laughs> want to do it. And now a thousand guys. Have you know, I said think yes. the only organization I've given a million dollars to is AT&T. Because of my cell phone bills for me and my family. So, I, golly, you've raised money for the fatherless and I've sent it to the telecommunications industry. Yes. Hey, Jeff. Uh, well, first of all, dude, I love your energy. You have got some fantastic optimism and uh, and and you talk super fast. And again, you've done it. You've blown by something. I think that it really struck me and I saw it on your website. When you say lead with wonder, that struck me. And, you know, I don't think enough people, I don't, I don't hear that. I don't, I don't hear lead with wonder or anything, you know, kind of like that. Um, and I, what it, what it meant to me was let's hold the hands of our children and lead our families and our wives and take a moment to realize what God is doing in our lives, in the lives of others. And what he's created, you know, I, I, I love camping. My girls have grown up with some camping and, and I, it's rare to go out into nature and not have that sense of wonder. So I know, I know you weren't going down that path necessarily of, of nature, but how did that, how did that happen? And, and what does that mean to you? Thank you for asking and kind of rewinding because yes, I do get passionate storytelling. All of a sudden I'm way over here. So rewinding to activating dads to lead with wonder. Those three words, lead with wonder, that you were curious about. Uh, I think the dad life is the default, if we're not if we're not focused, if we're not prayerful, is, is to all of a sudden move towards passivity or move towards, let's just keep this thing mildly under control. Let's just mm. try to like keep it under control mm. versus you put on the leadership. It's like, well, I've moved from uh, passive to, no, I'm actually, I'm a part of charting a course. So leadership is huge for dads and to see it as a gift. The leadership is a gift we've been given that we can take leadership on the home front. But then mm. with wonder, the with side is, man, it's a joy to be with my kids and let them know that I like being with them and take mm. them with me 
uh, on the road or to this adventure or to this place or to this errand or to do this job or to lead this mission. The with side, do your kids love, do my four little girls love being with dad? And do they see my job, my marriage, my friends as like, I can be with him in those spheres, right? Um, but you had wonder, and I'm glad you mentioned, um, I'm glad you mentioned nature. Wonder my goodness, there's there's the stars, there's nature, there's a waterfall, there's a sunset, a sunrise, there's an ocean. There's so many things. I stopped for like 15 minutes and looked at a duck. This was a couple years ago with my daughter. There was a duck in a frozen pond. And we were just talking with like, there's so much wonder about the mm. feathers and how it's protected and how it's uh, designed. And got, like, there's so much wonder if you pause, but if you invite your kids with you into that wonder. And the the, the story we tell is, mm. man, if a dad will take his kids um, to the waterfall of God's love. So this is the wonder mixed with like, man, core experience in the love of God, being a loved son of God. If a dad will go to that waterfall, so picture a hike, picture a waterfall, maybe you've been up near. If a dad will get soaking wet with the love, like the love of God and their kids love to be with dad, there's no way those kids don't get wet with the love of God. And, mm. and that we, we anchor that back to Deuteronomy 30, 19. I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses, choose life so that you and your kids may live. And that live is not survive. That live is not just like a baseline. Like we get to choose as dads, life or death. If we choose life, if we choose to enter with our whole hearts and pursue the hearts of our kids and experience the love of God and bring our kids with us to get wet with the wow. soaking wet with God's love, then the promise is forward to future generations with that verse. If we choose life, then they may live and live and we need, that's our prayer is that there'll be a ripple effect forward of dads mm. that live with their whole hearts and active, you know, their, their dads that lead, lead with wonder will raise kids who lead with mm. wonder and it snowballs. So Jeff, if I'm taking my my boys golfing and I'm out looking for my ball for a half an hour in the woods, does that count as leading with wonder? Because I don't know where my ball is. I'm wondering where the ball is. That's so good. Uh, I am gonna I am gonna dial into that humor for a second because <laughs> curiosity and failure of like I messed up the go. shot. Yes. Let's be nice curious. job, Jeff. Uh, Pippi weaving in that senseless comment. Here we go. Here we go. Pippi Longstockings. Anyone read recently? Uh, yes. Is this just me oh. as a girl dad? She no. she says be a thing finder, and she takes these two little friends out, and they look for things, and they 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 actually celebrate finding junk. Is what it is. And we talk about being thing finders. <laughs> AKA Kent's golf ball. <laughs> Exactly. Like, like, can we, can we make it fun? Even when we've, uh, you know, messed up and hit the ball where it doesn't belong. Can we make it fun? Make it fun, Kent. Ooh, that's well, good. That I can do that part. I can yeah. do. You turn that wasted comment from Kent into something really good. <laughs> wasted. Hey, <laughs> Hey, um, so I went and saw the new movie, the forge. We had the Kendrick brothers on podcast and I went last night and, um, something you just said, there's two things in that movie that, and I don't want to spoiler, spoiler alert. I don't want to give anything away. Cause I, I dads go see this movie, the forge, but um, you said get soaking wet with God's love. There was a, a moment in the movie where this young man is challenged to either be a, he says, don't be a fountain. Excuse me. He says, be a be fountain, a not yes. a drain. Yes. And when you said soaking wet with God's love, and leading your kids with wonder and leading them to that waterfall. Man, I, I remembered back to, to what he was saying that really struck me. So talk just a little bit about how do you, how do you do that? What sorts of opportunities can you weave in practically into your life and your family with your kids, with your wife to lead them to the waterfall? Yeah. So such a good question. And, and I love the movie, The Forge. I've had a chance to see it twice now. I invited guys in my area of Northeast Florida to come with me on opening night. And it is such a, just like for any dad listening, the easiest thing ever, it's not leading a long-term small group. It's not a coaching session. It's not the, just by texting some other dads, you know, and say, come to this movie with me. It's like the easiest, lowest bar to take initiative and to say, I'm going to be a difference maker versus someone waiting for someone else to take initiative in the area of the dad life and discipleship. So there we go. Everyone's been challenged and invited. Just, just get a few other dads and go see this movie. It will make a difference. Um, but the fountain, 
the analogy of a fountain versus a drain, just like take, take, take a drain versus a fountain, just give and the bubbling over. Mm -hmm. And we just talk that to, to pair the fountain with the waterfall. You never wonder if that waterfall is going to, going to run dry. Now in the course of a season, maybe it does slow down a waterfall, but when you're there with your kids, there's never a question of, will that, like if you're at a water park, there's a chance it could turn the water off and that, mm. that slide gets turned off. But a a waterfall, there's no one turning that that off. It's going to keep flowing and there's no scarcity in it, right? Um, and as a dad, I want my girls to see um, my marriage, uh, my friendships. I want them to know that we're a family who gives. We're a family that doesn't um, hoard and gather and say more for me, more for me. We're, we, we take joy. It is fun to give. And we've had a few families in our home this past week and hosting is probably a great um just practical way to do this is just get sure. families in your home and families that are having a hard time and it's not hard to think about what are a few families that are just having a hard time it could be so many different aspects of that uh, the families that were in our home this past week we had a chance and our girls saw it like we brought life to that other family and guess who else ended the evening mm, with a huge smile yeah. on their face like we mm -hmm. as a family are way better off like we feel so much more like can you believe we got to spend that evening with the family because when you just are a fountain and you just give and it, some of it actually led to prayerfully follow-up giving um to help that family out because of the place they're at in certain cir circumstances and we this morning huddled up and we prayed as a family for um, some of our friends who are at a court hearing right now. And we're like, let's let's huddle up, stack hands and pray. And our entire breakfast prayer had nothing to do with breakfast. It was all about this family who we love. And so that's examples of being a fountain of just like, man, are we, where's our aim? And is it self-focused or others focused? And we, tr we tried wow. to do that with the ministry, Dad Awesome. And I've told my girls, if, if it at all is counter family, if the giving makes me a less awesome dad, then I'll shut it down. Here's the little button to flip and the eject button to shut the ministry down. I'll, I'll shut it down if I'm, not, if I'm not actually living, not a perfect dad life, but a dad life yeah. of they know I'm coming after their hearts. I'm praying for mm -hmm. them. I'm for them. I'm going to be present. Um, and uh, But they, they know that dad is on mission and they're, they they like that they have a dad who's on mission. And so that's the fountain. Like, I want to be about others versus just myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. Well said. Kent and I talk a lot and 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 data research that, that Kent through Manhood Journey and the team have done says that it's a whole lot harder to do this dad thing on your own uh, than, than with mm -hmm. help. And one more, one more reference to the forge. And I really want to be careful here because it's a cool moment in the movie where he's, he's relating uh, God's word to the sword. You know, it can be a sword in our life. And he's, he challenges this young man to hold the sword out and he keeps talking and he's, he's kind of leading up to something. The sword, as he's talking, the sword's getting heavier, right? Well, what are the other dads in this little group do? Uh, they show how just with a finger, they'll come to the end of the sword and, and prop it up for him. And man, I, I literally got teary eyed watching that scene because it was such a vivid reminder. And, you know, I've got guys in my life, but I, I want to be more purposeful in bringing them into the struggles in my life, not just keeping in touch, but let's go even deeper. Mm. What, what kind of advice or examples have you seen where God does work through us as dads with other guys in our life? Yeah. Uh, so many, um, the sword uh, picture from that film though, of it's all his strength to hold the sword out at an ar at, with an outstretched arm, holding a sword. And it's just one little finger. It's so light to bring such relief and that is the parallel, like the, the stories I can think of. And, and a lot of them actually tie to being on mission together. The friendships formed when we've joined a mission together of this fathers for the fatherless campaign of guys riding together, training together, having uh, a, a tire go flat and your roadside getting bit by mosquitoes, changing the tire. And what happens over the course of time when you do things together uh, has been all of a sudden permission given to speak into each other's life. And mm. the counselor that I went and saw, sat in, in, and met with a counselor the first time, my first year of marriage, 17 years ago. And it took a lot of courage for me to go see that. It actually took a devastating circumstance outside of our own marriage to get me to go see a counselor, right? Mm. 
the best gift ever. And I've seen so many guys move uh, with courage to speak and, and, and say, hey, go see it. I'm going to help introduce you to a counselor because I am for your family and mm. I want to see your family healthy and, 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 and unified and, and whole and go the distance versus this thing implode. And, and so I've seen these little, and it didn't take anything for that relationship, though, that guy to speak that challenge because they've journeyed together, have sweat together, have su- have been bit up by mosquitoes together. Um, now yeah. that inserting a little bit of an incur- like saying, "Hey, you can do this." Let me let me share some of my story, anchor that to some of your story, and and plant some hope and some purpose and some future. Um, it didn't take much to share that, but it was received because mm. of a friendship formed. And and we say at dad awesome like you are not being dad awesome if it's you're just pursuing the heart of your wife and your kids if it's just about mm. you and the home front you actually have missed half the mission because it's all short sighted if you don't have brothers if you don't have a few other guys that are after this mission together you will not make it the distance you will not mm. be able to hold that arm hold that hold that strength um you you have to it's the only way to be dad awesome is to do it in brotherhood so everything we do is trying and i know you guys are the same way it's like you have to move but sometimes it's not as simple as just well find a few friends like it actually takes some stepping stones to get from being a lonely dad who doesn't have the friends to uh in in my example earlier uh, of going out to see the forge movie together is a perfect example of just like a simple first step uh, i hope yeah. i'm hosting a couple different small groups right now and i uh, a monthly dad gathering i just invite a bunch of guys and and it just slowly yeah. if you take initiative and never wait to you feel like you've arrived to lead something in the area <laughs> of fatherhood. As soon as, as soon as Satan can get that, that, that lie planted of you have to have arrived, then he wins on a global movement of no fatherhood ministry happening because we all mm. are struggling and we all, and if you look at the state of the church with fatherhood ministry, just look for groups and small group directories. Are there anyone doing dad groups? It's like, mm. I think it's like the 1%, like one out of a hundred are doing anything. So there's some, yeah. because that Satan is winning with this lie that you have to have arrived to lead and take initiative and be a gatherer and a curator and, and grab some curriculum and start a campfire. Like it's so easy, but so few dads are the ones that are willing to go first. Mm. So I'm pretty passionate about this topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking as the only perfect dad around, that's me. I, that I can only dance, lead yeah. so many, you know, I can only lead so many. So I'm going to have to have some other help along. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes. Man, for sure. Like I, uh, I've had just even in the last week, I've had guys who are <clears throat> uh, involved in my life, speaking to my life, words of encouragement and strength that are for relationships, Jeff, I've cultivated for in some cases, a couple of decades, like these are not guys I met last week. These are guys I've known for five, 10, even 20 something years. And so <clears throat> what you're saying to me resonates so deeply because um, to live the isolated life as a man is, is man, that's dangerous and foolish. I, I'm trading emails not too long ago with somebody. I don't even know where they live uh, geographically, but I do know that the guy is isolated, that he's reaching out because he doesn't know who else to reach out to. And what I'm asking him is, man, who do you have nearby? Who do you have that's in your circle that you can go to grab coffee with or grab lunch with? And so far, those answers have been like kind of nobody. And I'm like, ooh, man, it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder for that guy. Um, I want to pivot a little, Jeff, to we have a lot of guys uh, listening, I'm sure, who are raising daughters. And I want to ask you questions about uh, your kids are all really young. What are some things that you're doing uh, or your wife is doing these days in the last year or two or three to pour into your daughters specifically? What are some things that you guys either do all together as a family or you do, you know, with them individually or your wife does with them? Give a dad raising young daughters some practical tips that you have learned uh, either on the do side or the do not side. Yeah. Um, the first one that jumped into my, my heart as you asked the question is remembrance. So we are trying in every phase to capture, look what God did. Look what, look how God provided this house that we're renting. Look how God provided for this, um, 
this prayer that we were praying. Look how God provided for this family who we love. And we write those things down. We use our photos and our calendar as anchoring, like to remind us. And we try to do this monthly. And sometimes it's even more often when we were living in the RV, it was every time we we up we pulled up the leveling jacks and pulled in the slides and moved the RV, we, we made a list of look what God did. Some of them are so little there. We got a discount on these tickets to go to this water park. Like, I mean, but like truly we wouldn't have gone. It wasn't for the discount. So we say, God, thank you. Right. For that good gift. And we, by, by really just putting a foundation of remembrance in our girls, and this would apply to boys or girls, but their little hearts, you could see their eyes. My wife works really hard on photo books and like capturing memories because We'll live forward with more faith and more like expectant for miracles if we can really capture, celebrate, and give thanks for the past. So, so that's mm. a that's a tool wow. that we've used with our our girls. Um, yeah, daddy daughter dates. Even my oldest is about to turn eleven. She's totally good with me calling it a date still, and like like it's just like it's fun, <laughs> it's precious, and it's simple. Yeah. We've done as small scale as we're going to go to that gas station. And let her pick out which Tic Tacs. And we don't even need all of them. She eats like two of them. Like it's that the budget can be what? super low. I do yeah. try to add a little bit of epic into my dad daughter dates, not just buy something sweet. Um, so we'll we'll do act, active based things. We'll go surfing now that we live near the ocean. We'll um, and I'm working actually. I have a plan with my 11 year old. She starts it here in two weeks when she turns 11. We have a uh, we have a 10 year plan of of monthly 100 minute conversations and we actually have the first two years mapped out so instead of me building it she built it with me and it's just a Whoa. it's a monthly daddy daughter date with a little more a little deeper purpose and it's longer uh it leads to ten thousand minutes of intentional connection time over we, we don't even do it every month wow. we do it 10 months out of the year and because we've got a few months that we're just intentionally she's like said let's take the christmas month off and birthday month off it's just it's fun she picked the two months to take off and we're gonna like do 10 of these a year and we've actually, we've done a few of these rounds before. This one has, uh, we feel like we've piloted this one-on-one -on -one and a little bit of like a discipleship plan. We've done a few rounds of piloting, That's trying cool. things and seeing what works. And now we kind of, we have it dialed in and we're kicking it off. So you'll have to ask me to keep me accountable in a year. Did you do 10 of those with your daughter, your oldest daughter? But I truly... Um, letting her build the plan with me versus saying, I've got a plan. I've got a plan. Let's do this together. She's like excited for it. it each one adds, um, there's a, ch there's like a challenge each month that we've created it, that, that tie with the themes. And so, so that's an example of like a dad who's maybe geeking out a little bit on intentionality, but it's <laughs> once a month and it's not that many minutes. It's so funny. I will make uh, time for, if either of you guys said, Hey, can we grab another half hour together to talk on this separate topic after right. this recording? I would say yes. Right. If either of you guys asked right. and I've right. only met you guys recently, why would I not let my seven-year-old who asked for 30 minutes? Um, right. Would I not hold that calendar appointment? So the dad daughter dates wow. and putting them on the calendar and following through, okay, making them fun. Jeff, I've, I've just got to go back to what you just said. <laughs> okay. I want I want a dad to hear that so clearly because we so frequently as men, when we've done surveys of dads and we've had thousands of answers to this question, what is your single greatest challenge as a father? Literally thousands of answers. Yes. And most of them, the vast majority have something to say about time, which is interesting. They don't say like, you know, my kid's addiction to their technology device or, you know, whatever. They say, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time, 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 time. We hear that all of the time. And I would like for you just to double click on what you said a minute ago about how much time this takes and how we as men would tend to give that time away in other places, whether that's volunteer committee or business, or someone popped into our office and said, Hey, you got 15 minutes, man, that really lands hard with me in a good way that yeah. where are we spending our time? Where are we wasting our time? And where are we investing our time? Can you just yes. talk a little more about that? How'd you get there mentally? Yep. So uh, I was given, and this may sound a little weird, but I was given $60,000 from my grandpa when I was, um, let's see, I was, a, I was a freshman. Is your grandpa school. still Same. alive? No, I passed I? away. <laughs> so again, I'm a manhood journey pitch real quick. 
I'm a freshman in, in high school, and he gave all 10 grandkids, he intentionally seeded money for our college in saving bonds. And I did. I let it grow a little. Actually, maybe it was 40 and it grew to 60. Um, and I paid that, that. That's what it took with me working hard and having minimal loans. I was able to pay for most of my college, about 75% of my college with that gift. If I would have taken the $60,000 in the year 20, um, 2000, it was like, or 2001 when I paid off college and then put it into Apple stock. Okay. If I would have put the money into Apple stock and taken, just pl played slow game on my college mm. loans, you know, that would be roughly $18 million today. If I would have taken the gift from my grandpa, the compounded interest in one stock that we know did pretty well. Right. Wow. Okay. So I'm convinced, and this is, uh, so I'm gonna use a spreadsheet uh, analogy. I have a spreadsheet with my four daughters names on the spreadsheet. And when they're about 25 to 30, there's four blanks of their four husbands names on that spreadsheet. And then when they're about 30, they're having kids. And I have a factor of, you can do a factor of, they each have three kids, they each have four, whatever the number is, but it plays forward. And each generation is on there 126 years from now. Okay. I've played this out four generations. I will not be alive 126 years from now. I know though, that if, if it played out at the high end of the scale, four kids, each future husbands, you add the different numbers of husbands and, and spouses and kids and grandkids. It's, it's over 600 is just for my own family. So this is why I think it's important to do the Apple stock alongside of just the family multiplication. If kids have kids and get married and have kids and get married and have kids forward. So I pray now for those four future husbands, but I think I actually need a longer view of time. If I think longer out hundreds and hundreds, if you, you just downscale it to 300 that would come from my own family, um, Dads, if we think about the longevity of investment of time, we only have this limited amount of time with our kids before the time is, it's its tiny fractional moments once they leave the house. It's tiny fractional moments versus deep, rich opportunity when they're on the home front. So I, I've built this 10-year plan for my oldest to take her through 21 years old. I even know that the last few years of that scale, if she's in college or she's you know doing gap year stuff or on mission or uh, whatever, I, I, it's gonna be harder to find that 100 minutes once a mm. month with my daughter. Mm. It's gonna be yeah. much harder. It might have to be through Zoom calls like this one. So the reason for all those different backdrops of the Apple stock versus the long 126 year spreadsheet versus right now, these 100 minutes once a month. Dads, this is, this is just... The easiest, easiest, best investment with compounding interest than we can ever imagine. There's no possible mm. way to spend time better than some intentional dad-daughter, dad-son outings with a little bit of a topic. And my my time with my girls is 80%. Four out of five questions are ridiculousness. It doesn't matter. I'm talking about <laughs> weird smells. I'm talking about this or that, or if I had this growth on my arm, what would I do? Like, I'm just like silly, ridiculous things. And then one, I sprinkle in one that I really care deeply about. I'll ask, Hey, is there a time in the last few weeks where I've hurt you that your heart has been sad because of something I did? And I sprinkle in some deeper, meaningful questions that give me an opportunity to show love and repentance and care. And dad's like, this is not hard to prioritize. We're not talking 10,000 hours. I said 10,000 minutes is my goal with my with my 10 year old over 10 years. Like it's just sprinkling in intentional time. So I, I could go on and on and on. Did, did that answer the question you asked as far as why? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, being intentional like that, uh, I love it. You're also modeling um, communication with men when you're doing this with your daughters. I think about that, you know, as they're, as they're growing in their relationship, I have, I have two that are in their um, early mid twenties and um, you know, you can, you can see in their lives that the expectation they have of men is based on what they've seen. So you way to go, dude. And I also want to just throw this at you and just affirm the work that you're doing. You know, the Bible says to, to lift each other up. I was reading Romans 12 uh, earlier this morning. Romans 12, 11 and 12, you remind, they remind me of you. And now knowing you, you remind me back to this Romans 12, 11 says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. And 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faith in prayer. Dude, way to go. Uh, I love that you just have 
grabbed your family up. You're all in. It's so obvious that that God is doing work through you and your family. And I think that there's a movement among fathers uh, that is growing. And it takes it takes God working through people like you. Um, and so hats off, man. Thank you very much. I have one more question and I'll, I'll turn it over to Kent. You were very intentional. You probably have a spreadsheet on this with four tabs, one for each of your daughters, knowing you now. <laughs> um, how do you how do you parent? How do you how do you be a dad? They're they're different, I would assume. All four have very different personalities. You can do a lot of things similarly, but you also have to know your kids and you have to know what makes them tick. You have to understand their personality. That takes time as well. It takes intentionality, it takes paying close attention. How do you, how do you as a dad, be a dad to each of your four daughters in a way that meets them where they are? Great question. And I am still, I feel like each phase I have to rediscover and re-pray into what's the current phase for each of my little girls and their hearts and helping them know that they're treasured and helping them know that I want to spend time with them. And there are some anchoring parts of the day that I think I, I get a, a, a reminder to myself. Bedtime. So I do bedtime. I don't know how many Dads are just kind of in charge of bedtime, um, but it's my it's my domain is bedtime, and and it does give me a kind of an extended time to pray with. To um, I mean, often I need to like insert an earbud and be listening to you guys' um, curriculum around anger free because I feel like eighty <laughs> percent of the bedtime process is uh, I'm like internally like how in the world is this taking so long and why can't you stop interrupting me? We need and a like, new course called say, Anger Free Bedtime. Yes, we I so needed. So um so I the bedtime though is a moment to put my hand on theirs and to whisper truths and blessings. So bedtime is one of those anchoring like it is a connection point as a group, but also individually. Mornings, as each of them wake up, I'm pretty much always in the living room. Um, uh, that's a spot that I, I am early in the morning that, that I get to give them that first hug of the day. So just another affirmation moment of my love for them. Uh, Fridays have become our kickoff to our Sabbath as a family. And, and uh, we have a dinner that I'm able to pray blessings and specific like courage into their little hearts. And uh, so it's it's wow. my light a candle and it's it's my domain, I get to pray over all four of my girls in that moment at a Friday dinner uh, as we kind of kick off our Sabbath. So there's there's a few anchoring things and then the daddy dates that I mentioned, but the the actual individual, does this daughter need to cook a meal together with me? Is it that our connection point? Is it going out a, uh, playing a board game at a coffee shop? Is it going for a run because we're training for a Spartan? All four of my girls now do Spartan obstacle course races with, they, they go do the kid <laughs> version, which is wild. And and uh, they're, they're getting into the things that dad loves. So it, right now it's not that hard to find delight mm. and joy and adventure with my girls. It's it's actually like tonight we're going to Costco and I've, I'm in charge. Um, my, my wife's hosting a group here. So dad at Costco with my girls, um, I don't want to do that. But there is a way <laughs> to make it fun and to add some adventure and to make a little bit of mission. And one of the girls gets to hold the checklist and one, they get to scout and go out and grab stuff. And um, it's we try to make it fun, try to turn the drudgery because there is, I mean, a lot of dad life is like, I just want to get through this. Like, like this is not mm. personally fulfilling in this moment. So if you can gamify, add a little challenge, add a little adventure, a spark. I, I tell pirate dog stories. I've created a series of uh, stories for my girls. And it's the adventures of pirate dog and, and the secret agent sisters. And they're always solving challenges and being like missional and adventurous. Oh and I make these up on the fly. And some a lot of nights I don't want to tell them because I'm frustrated at how bedtime's going. But... <laughs> <laughs> they bring adventure tonight pirate dog is super angry well daddy wasn't pirate dog mad last night yeah he's mad a lot and, <laughs> and we gotta solve the problem it's, it's told it's therapy it's therapy for me you got it you nailed it <laughs> pirate dogs on the couch talking to his therapist that's what pirate dogs doing um you know uh jeff obviously uh, dads go to dadawesome.org go listen to the dad awesome podcast uh, I have come quickly to love and appreciate you, Jeff, partly because your heart is open 
to partnership and I, and you have a kingdom minded vision. One of the first things Jeff ever emailed to me was this idea for how we could get fatherhood organizations to work better uh, together. And so it's just amazing to watch a guy like you uh, be, be a, a catalyst inside the fatherhood movement for so many different ministries and, and connections, man, God bless you. And I pray continued blessings on your work. I want to give you kind of like the final word to a dad. Um, we hear from dads a lot who, um, if, if I could describe the kind of general vibe from the dads we tend to hear from it's dads who feel like they are failing. It's dads who feel like they are not doing enough. They're not doing enough of the right things. They're not making enough money. They're not home enough. They're not. And there's this general sort of malaise, I would say, across Christian dads where they just feel like, man, life's on top of them. Situations are on top of them and they don't, they don't feel like they can get their head above the dad water. Um, I would like for you to take a minute and just talk to that dad uh, who probably is listening to this show or, uh, or, or you dad might be listening to this show and you know, a dad who feels that way, you know, a dad who's, who's in the middle of it. You need to send that dad today's episode because they will be so encouraged by Jeff's enthusiasm and his zest for life and his focus on the gospel. Jeff, would you just close us out by talking to a dad who feels discouraged? How would you speak encouragement and life into the life of that dad? Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. And I I'm speaking this to myself. Like this is truly, I need to hear this today. You know, we carry a backpack as a dad and through our life as a child, as a young adult, as a newly married, as a, as a dad, things have been added to our backpack that are weight that we're not designed to carry. There's weight that adds up, weight from our own fathers or our father wasn't around, so that added weight. There's weight from things that we've done wrong or hurts that we've done and caused to ourselves, or other people have caused to us or maybe a church or a pastor has caused. And we add this weight and weight and a generation of dads carrying weight is not going to be a generation of dads bringing their full hearts to the dad life or their full hearts to their kids, their full like um, courage. And what, what God invites us to do is throw off with like, throw it off is not this gentle invitation of just, oh, take it off and set it down. It's like, no, throw it off. Hebrews 12, one and two is like, throw off. The, the things that hinder the sin that so easily entangles. So it might be weight from the past or things we're caught up in right now. Dads, there's things that might we might be caught up in that we need to take seriously the throwing off of those things. So because it will so easily entangle and it will cause us to have just this carry this heavy burden that we're not designed to. We're actually designed to fix our eyes on Jesus and run this dad life with joy and with purpose, with mission. And our kids are watching our eyes. And so if, if you, you as a dad feel like your eyes are dull today, if you're feeling, man, I'm, it's because I'm carrying all this weight. God invites us. Jesus invites us to to, to throw it off and to receive what Jesus received the day he was baptized. Like, guys, we have to hear this. The heavens ripped open when Jesus was baptized. And by the way, there was like 15 years that he could have been doing purposeful ministry, but he actually humbled himself, Jesus, and was an apprentice to his earthly father, Joseph, before he was activated into mission. So dad, the time horizons often were like, we we should be, we should be like rocking it right now. And there's all kinds of things in our life that may feel like a, a delays or a job or this or that. Jesus though, when he was activated, the heavens ripped open. And God said, you are my loved son. So dads, I want you to hear it. Like you are a loved son of God. That's your identity. Be a son before you're trying to be a father. You are a loved son of God. And then he says, in you, I am well pleased. Like those words are for us as adopted sons of God. We get to walk in being a loved son of God and knowing that God's pleasure is all over us. He's like, you can do it. You're a dad who can do it. Doesn't matter the way you used to carry. You can throw it off, receive my love. Walk as a loved son of God and bring your whole heart and your shiny eyes to the dad life. So that's my encouragement to all of us is like walk in that like confidence and swagger, like be dad awesome, like live into the manhood, manhood journey and all the tools, like live into this with your full heart guys, because you don't have to walk that way with dull eyes and a heavy bag. You can throw it off and just 
be purposeful, be joyful, experience wonder, and it'll, it'll be contagious to your kids. <laughs>